2000s Amazing the Great Curates list as superhero paintings, from over 15 years of global exhibitions, in its first Australian institutional gallery. Seen within the physicality of the works are the markers of this retrospective reflection. The paintings are mammoth, highly polished and stylized on stretched canvas. However, Lister has marked each one with his notation, and they are alone in stature, avoiding his usual diptych duos, inviting a future for the series. The superheroes are a format for Lister's obsession with contemporary mythology and immortality, and each figure depicted within the paintings wears a mask, a sly nod to Lister's career as a famous street artist. The absence of the second part of the diptych creates a departure from the duality of the artist's different practices, the mask and superhero characters force the two lives to the surface, feeding into one, revealing the tangled web of crime versus justice. He shares, hyped up on neon-flavored cereal as Saturday morning cartoons scream out about a confused moral fortitude, as Lister's paintings stand over the audience, we are reminded of the gods, and thus, greatness. The rendering of these figures opens the altar to worshipping the untouchable, and the narrative of ancient Greek mythology runs throughout the exhibition. The battle of the younger gods, the Olympians, against the older titans, or, the mashup of demigods, or in Lister's case, superheroes. This romance weaves throughout the paintings but juxtaposes against the jarring colors, tones, and messy abstracted lines. We can begin to wonder where the artist sits within the framing of contemporary culture, a new artist joining the platform of modern masters, or an older soul leaving the informality of street art. The roles of superheroes have dominated pop culture since their origins in the 1930s as a way to understand the grapples of contemporary society. Today this narrates the climate crisis, MeToo movements, Black Lives Matter, and fascist right-wing politicians crawling their ways to the top. Lister continues a thematic approach, or right and wrong, by depicting a mashup of heroes and villains, using color and distinct motifs to distinguish, or muddle, who is allowed to break the rules. As the artist reflects, if the law is unjust, are you free to break it? On the canvases, stretching out to over three meters in width and depth, Lister uses the scope of comic book colors, red, blue, yellow, green, and black. However, the characters are void of background, they hover in negative space. Textual build, the paint appears collaged, offering depth beyond the physicality of each figure, every 10 cm square offer something new as the viewer peers up closer to the artwork. Shadows and light compete within the works, and Lister's signature small, sharp, brushwork creates a tonal palette that brings the artworks to life with movement. The characters are ready, appearing to action their intended purpose. Lister uses a long pole in his process, sticking a small roller brush to the end of the extended handle. The artist explains this technique reflects on mark making in art history, it's all tracks of history first learned by Max Gimblet, Lister's mentor in New York, the young artist watched Gimblet paint with a mop, tracking the scope of the canvas, adding gestural depictions of movement in the monochrome figurative expressionism, which Lister invites, discreet lie, into his paintings. At the time, the artist was also aware of Henri Matisse, who used long poles to access high area, and in doing so, invited an odd and shaky nature. It was this that the artist embraced, and as we see throughout his paintings, the handwriting is not actually his own. The aesthetic of this creates an intentional lack of control, and Lister employs this technique to force constraints between himself to maintain an authentic point of honest tension. However, the handwriting also translates beyond the aesthetics, into the conceptual and theoretical context of the works. Lister says, it's been an ongoing and progressively absorbing ritual, or at least part of the finishing process to a body of work, and it's seeping into actual pieces of work, it allows the curation of the exhibition, to the post. Painting process, the artworks become alive and into the present moment, resisting predetermined contexts. The text becomes a way to see into the future, linking the artworks within an active state of motion, and combined with bright colors takes Lister's concept of created in the ad break to the next degree. In the place, he says, is where one finds one's self, slapped with pop puzzle lashings, the artworks come together quickly, and collectively, in Lister's studio. From the red masked, ballerina posed, spider woman revised, to the Hulk, ghost rider mash up, Burning Skull edits, Lister's characters talk to each and reveal qualities that only can generate through contrast. Paint drips join spray painted splatters that give the figures a buzzing quality, visually wet, the paintings become alive in movement. 
in the studio, they are part of the action, dirt, rainwater, wind whips them. However, as they cross the boundaries to the formal galleries, they become polished, sanitized, they leave the qualities of Lister's street art behind. For the artist, the gallery is a full stop, and the works that enter the space are the finished product. By nature, the artworks reject the temporality of street art, it is not organic, and it cannot grow. It's a beautiful place actually, galleries are like heaven, if the world is just the earth, Lister muses. In a truly biblical romantic ideal life, have his gods found their final resting place then, have they been invited to Olympus to dominate from the highest power? A demigod taking its place, or mortal playing with fire?